Okay, well, since you're live, I will. Uh, we don't have any audio. I, I've muted it so far. To the this one here. Well, we started early, folks. I didn't know that was going to happen. These things do occur. Live streaming is a very strange, mysterious, difficult, unpredictable process as we've discovered on many, many occasions. But we actually do have everything working, so we were trying to do a test 10 minutes before, and all of a sudden it said it was live. So there you go. That's how these things roll. And yes, you probably got to hear me use profane language. My wife had put a cooking apron on me because we were gonna have a little bit of breakfast, but uh, here we are. So thank you, Elizabeth, for the bowls to get us started. Um, it's a very sad occasion that's going on here in America right now. And we want to give you a cosmic pep talk and speak about it in ways that are not uh, confrontational. I've always felt that, uh, well, first of all, let me just express my sincere shock and outrage and horror at the cold-blooded murder of George Floyd. Uh, there is no excuse for this. I would never support anything like this under any circumstances. If you guys know me, you know that's not the way I work at all. Uh, it was intensely sad for me, intensely traumatizing for me, because you're basically looking at a murder that is being watched by everyone pieced together from different cell phone pictures, and there is no excuse for this. Uh, that being said, let me just say right off the top that violence does not solve violence. Violence does not end the problem of violence. When we have violence, we get more violence, and these problems compound upon one another, and it's very, very sad. Um, 
What I do want to say is that a lot of people are concerned about the things that I've been saying in previous shows uh, and throughout my whole career regarding this concept of the Alliance which as I've said so many times is a an international group that is working very diligently to bring about real lasting change on this planet to bring about the kind of change that we need today to alleviate the suffering that is so commonplace in this world the suffering that we see everywhere the suffering that is totally prevalent in our society Unfortunately, this ordeal that we've just been through has greatly hampered the economy. But as I've told you guys all along, there has been a plan in place since at least the 1950s to address these problems, the deep underlying root causes of what's really going wrong on planet Earth. How did we get here? How did we get to the point where the economy has been devastated? Everybody has to wear masks. People are afraid to leave their houses. It's finally starting to change. And then just at the exact moment that most of the country is going to open up and everything is going to be happier. We noticed it here in Los Angeles, people being a lot happier. Uh, the traffic of cars has gone way up, which for us as pedestrians with the dog is not necessarily a good thing. But I'm very, very grateful the society is reopening nonetheless. And people are now driving more respectfully. We had a big problem here in Los Angeles with people driving past us as pedestrians going much too fast, even 60 miles an hour on a residential street with a 25 mile an hour speed limit. That thankfully has gone down, but uh, what hasn't changed is the underlying resolve that we all have. We want to see change in the world. We want to see a positive future manifest itself. We want to see a new space age. We want to see forbidden technologies or otherwise unacknowledged or maybe undiscovered technologies, but they don't seem to be undiscovered. They seem to be just unacknowledged and unreleased. We want to see this stuff come out into the open. There's a lot of interesting things going on behind the scenes to say the least. And there is a overall diagram that we've been given by the alphabet letter between P and R. <laughs> Think about that one for just a little bit. It shouldn't be too hard. The alphabet letter between P and R uh, has been giving us a lot of stuff lately. There's been a huge number of briefings. So never have they wavered in their confidence that this is going to work out for us. And remember that on the tail end of this, we are getting a global economic reset. There will be great, great prosperity unleashed. Uh, and actually, most Americans are now already getting payments that are sizably more than what they were making before. The unemployment payments are, are significantly greater. It's actually 138% per, greater than average based on one statistic that I saw when I was reading through all this. Uh, so. That may be a harbinger of things to come. Uh, in other words, it's very, very easy right now if you're an American to get onto the unemployment system. Uh, in fact, when I got my hair cut, I was talking to my barber about this and a friend of his uh, had not paid taxes in eight years. And all he had to do to be able to collect unemployment was to pay $600 and file this one form. That was it. So uh, obviously to, get, to pay $600 and get $2,000 a month in return is not a bad deal at all. So uh, the global economic reset is real and the alliance is real. This is really happening. If you go to websites like qmap.pub, I can't stress enough that you would want to be staying on that and following that and regularly reading that. Uh, because the letter between P and R is not a joke. <laughs> This is very real. They've made a number of statements lately that I uh, will alert you to. Um, this is kind of a last minute thing because these riots came up out of nowhere. But first of all, if let's just go back to some fundamentals, OK? Yes, follow the procedures that you are being told regarding wearing masks, regarding social distancing. In, I would never advise anyone to do otherwise. Uh, 
It is a compassionate thing to make sure that even if you are asymptomatic, which apparently is the vast majority of people, uh, that's not good for somebody who would have bad symptoms from this. So if, if you are asymptomatic, uh, we're wearing our masks when we go outside to any type of uh, bank or grocery store, just as, as we are required to by law here in Los Angeles. Theoretically, we're not opening up until the beginning of July. Uh, but I just want to point out that we are not advocating for you to do anything radical or violent whatsoever. And there's going to be lots of attempts made to appear that people who support the letter between P and R are doing that. That's not going to happen. Uh, we do not adv advocate violence at all. We do not advocate any type of uh, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth type of behavior. In other words, it is, it is horrific what happened to George Floyd. Uh, it, it truly broke my heart, breaks my heart. Um, I did go through periods of crying and tears in processing all this. I didn't want to do that now. I'm hoping that I don't. But it's really horrible hearing somebody cry for his mother and saying that he can't breathe and this effing psychopathic a-hole holding his, his knee down and not letting any breathing take place even with the crowd. I mean, look, this is the very definition of outrage, okay? It is the definition of outrage, and we cannot allow that kind of behavior to be condoned on behalf of anyone, much less law enforcement personnel, military, etc. That would be a war crime, okay? There are ethical considerations here. If this was a war, it would be a war crime. And we have to allow the justice system to do what it does, which is to prosecute the guilty. And this is very obviously a person who is guilty because it's been filmed from so many different angles. And there's no denying what happened. Now, let's talk about the philosophy of protesting. Apparently what we have in 17 different uh, cities in the US is peaceful protests. And there is a lot of confusion out there right now. And there's, it is a political landmine field, to say the least. I've been reading a lot of articles. I'm going to be putting out my own article because I want to speak in greatly precise terms with citations and links that you can link on to go and look at this stuff for yourself. Uh, so with all that said, uh, it should be very obvious to everyone that creating new acts of violence in a response to violence does not solve our problems. What we do want to do is encourage everyone to be aware that there is a much, much greater international police operation going on now which is not acknowledged, it is not being acknowledged, and we need them to be able to take care of it. We need to allow them to do their part which is to make sure that whoever in the world is genuinely trying to cause the greatest levels of violence, whoever in the world is genuinely trying to cause civil unrest, whoever in the world is genuinely trying to cause mass death, that those individuals, whoever they may be, regardless of what side it is, regardless of our apparent political affiliation, we need violence to stop. We need violence to stop because if we don't, then we are losing the plot. The plot is ultimately how do we make this world a better place for everyone? How do we open up our society in an ethical way? How do we bring about the lasting change that our forefathers fought for that paid the ultimate price of their lives? We just had Memorial Day, celebrating the veterans who died in service to their country and trying to ensure that we have the freedom to peacefully demonstrate when we start to, and I say we in quotation marks, and I'll explain that in a minute, but when we as Americans start to engage in violent activity as a reprisal for other violence or in the hopes of seeing that additional police officers who stood by and essentially did nothing, thereby aiding and abetting this murder, if we want to see them get justice as well, which is apparently one of the root causes of the violence, the message has been heard 
and this is not the way to do it. Okay, we do not burn down buildings, we do not burn down innocent people's businesses, places where the police are operating from, places where people need to buy food. The, the law enforcement personnel at times have engaged in horrific atrocities. That is not the norm. I love to speak to police officers because I consider myself to be a law enforcement officer, a soldier, in, in the cyber arena. And that is where I feel the greatest work needs to be done here. W going out on the street and setting something on fire only engages our enemies to do more. It only, the enemy is ignorance. The enemy is violence, right? We don't want violence. We don't want death. We're trying to stop that. We're trying to stop the economy from going down. We're trying to stop contagious disease by staying inside, by wearing our masks, by doing this the right way, okay? Regardless of who may have done this, if it was done by someone, whatever the hell you want to say, okay? There's really intrinsic points that we can't get past if we want to deal with this in any type of positive way. Please get woke. Please understand that participating in a riot, acting on behalf of others who are doing that, to th this furthers our problem. There is no net gain. We are only losing. We do not gain anything. We are not improving our lot as Americans or as citizens of this, of this world. So I ask you, please, if you see this kind of behavior going on, if you are part of a peaceful protest and certain individuals start trying to do violence, the best thing you can do is not jump in and participate in that. Those people need to be stopped. And what we are seeing, this is, I'm reading this now from multiple news reports, and again, because of how fast this thing is unfolding, I haven't had time to put the slides together, but mainstream media across the board, and this is regular media, okay, is talking about the fact that many of the people, well, not, this is where you start to get into the Snopes, and then they got to debunk it, and they got to make it look like it's, you know, something other than it is, but let's at least say there is no doubt whatsoever that at least a percentage, possibly a majority, of the people actually engaging in acts of violence in these cases, the people actually setting the fires, came from outside the state that the atrocities were taking place in. So why would somebody drive in from outside the state and participate in this kind of stuff? Well, you could speculate about that just like I could. We don't know anything right now, but the letter between P and R is making some pretty straightforward statements about what this is, where it came from, who's responsible for it. Uh, and it's interesting to note that when you're looking at left-leaning media, there is an effort made to as steer this as if it were the work of far-right, alt-right conservatives who are white people coming in from out of state and then engaging in this, hopefully the, the idea in this type of media, hopefully to try to make it look as if African Americans are doing this when they're largely not. Uh, in fact, the letter between P and R had a, had a brilliant thing about how uh, uh, photographs of a circle of African Americans protecting a Caucasian armed riot police officer, protecting him from a mob that, that he was uh, unable to defend himself against, that was just closing in on him from every angle. And these, these men, African American men wearing their masks, peacefully protesting, formed a human shield around him to stop him from being attacked. Those are the kind of stories we need to be focusing on. We cannot afford to allow small groups of people, now regardless of whether they are alt-right or whether they are far, far left, there's a lot of chatter, and the letter between P and R seems to be saying this as well, about this group called Antifa or Anti-Fascist League, right? And Antifa may very well get delineated as a certain type of organization by the federal government. 
So what we're seeing based on the statements from the Attorney General that are on the letter between P and R, et cetera, et cetera, is that this group, this provocative group, appears to be, at least in some cases, sending people in on purpose to take a peaceful protest and turn it into a violent one because it only takes a couple of fires to make things look awful. So you could have a relatively small number of people go in there and create disruption. They get arrested. They know they're going to get arrested, but then it's all about how does it look. And maybe a lot of them don't get arrested. So then we got to talk about, okay, well, who finances Antifa? Where does this all really go? And what is the ultimate agenda? We have an election coming up in just a few months and look at what is happening to the country. So we have to ask ourselves, is it possible that certain entities would do absolutely anything to try to win that election? And some people are going to answer that question one way. Some people are going to answer that question another way. But the point is, there is a very, very heavy duty political thing going on right now, which is the 2020 election. How does the election happen? Where does it come from? Who's involved in it? How do we vote? How do we marshal our forces as a society to get the change that we need? And I will also say this, and I'm going to be very honest with you right now. A lot of you guys were really upset about why have I not been doing more of these YouTube videos. Uh, and there's a couple reasons for that. First of all, we did do this, this class called Great Awakening. And it, was, uh, it ended up being six weeks, uh, five hours at a time on a Sunday. And this was a paid class. And it has helped us greatly to have done that. Um, that's a lot of work because I'm putting in time to make these slideshows that are five hours long. And we also had uh, other engagements that were on the schedule for this conference during the week. We had a Wednesday Q&A. We had Thursday Elizabeth doing her thing. It's an incredible burden uh, going through the actual process of being on shutdown, being on lockdown, essentially on a version of, of house arrest, house imprisonment, not able to leave home, dealing with all the personal catalyst, the personal events that come up in your daily life when you're actually a real person living through history, living through historical events that transform what it means to be human on Earth. Futurism has gotten really interesting, right? Because we can start to speculate about where this is taking us as a planet in the future. And so I, furthermore, look at what is happening on the social media tech giants and what is happening with the freedom of speech or the lack thereof. And there is a massive new movement of people who didn't understand what folks like you and I have been dealing with for a long time, which is if you talk about certain things, you're gone. You're not dead in the physical sense. It's, thank God it's nothing like what happened to George Floyd. But you are frickin' gone if you talk about certain things on social media, on a streamer like this, the one that I'm on right now. There's no recourse. You can't get your channel back. You can't get your page back. And you're, and you're out of the game. And then all of the years that you spent building up your following and building up, in my case, what is it now, 406,000 subscribers, right? That could go just like that. It could snuff out so fast. If you are aware of this, there was a 22 minute movie that came out pretty early along in this process. And it was actually done by a friend of mine. In fact, the first time Elizabeth and I were ever in close proximity was at one of his parties. And this movie, which I'm not going to name, but it's a uh, it's something that you're probably aware of because it starts with plan, okay? And it, it, it rhymes with pandemic. <laughs> well, there's a Dr. Judy in there among others and they do not want you to hear what she has to say at all. I watched this movie. I was impressed by it. Uh, there were some possible inaccuracies in it. 
That usually happens. It's very rare that somebody gets everything right. But there's a lot of things in there that get you thinking at least. And thinking should be permitted. Thinking should be allowed. You should be able to have access to information that is totally BS. If it's BS, you should be allowed to have access to that information. Because I think you're cool enough to make up your own mind about what you're going to believe. I don't think it's going to make you safer that certain information is completely forbidden from you having any access to it. And you have all of these professionals who are highly educated people with a great deal of credentials, and if they don't step along and say exactly what they're expected to say, the, the lights are going out left and right. So after this 22-minute movie came and went, it had millions of views. It had gotten 22 million views on its primary Facebook post. The one I was looking at, which was on this streamer, had 1.6 million views. It all disappeared. The only way you can find it now is on alternative platforms. And in the wake of it, what Elizabeth and I sat down one day and we looked at this. You want to come up here and let's talk about this for a minute because this was so freaking crazy. Oh, really? When they shut it off, it became the number one New York Times bestseller? Hmm. Well, we can haul you out here as well at some point. <laughs> they want to see him anyway. <laughs> come on, I'm, I'm live. You can't <laughs> talk right now. <laughs> he's, he's we'll get you out on your from behind You're going to get your the, own turn, man. Behind the table there. We got, we got our, our dear sweet uh, Danny and Brinkley working the switcher for us today because our, our normal help was not available. Mm -hmm. So look, the, the, the movie that started with P... Mm -hmm. You and I sat down. Let's make sure you're framed up. Yeah, I just can't see you. If you like and I, you don't have to look at me. Just look mm -hmm. at them. The, the movie that you and I saw, um, first of all, it was shocking. But let's talk about what happened when we looked up after it had disappeared completely off of the streamers. And what we saw as we went through a typical search engine search, the number of videos, it was unbelievable. It was it was at about in two days there were like a hundred videos complaining about at it. at least a hundred and uh, I think it's hard for people to make that many videos I mean they must have like sent a memo out or something is what we we're thinking that it looked like somebody said okay do this and there were all these little hate videos and you know shaming videos going out a, a staggering staggering volume mm -hmm. of, of hate videos of personal attacks against the filmmaker himself, mm -hmm. uh, personal attacks against his wife. You remember the one we watched? Yeah, and this is how they do it. Um, this is it what they so do. It was so bad. Nowadays, and you probably already know this, when people stand up and have a voice and start shining a light on the truth, this is the first tactic that they use. So we watched and we went through and saw a number of checkmarked mainstream channels disguised as alternative channels just with with high production value hundreds of videos that were just mm -hmm. annihilating mm -hmm. everyone involved in this every what they've done now is they've hunted down every single person in this movie they've got their names mm -hmm. and and you get this mob this cyber mob that right. comes to your cyber door and they want to do the equivalent of what's happening in these riots. They want to burn your house down. So you're watching a gang stalking campaign. So right now, a lot of the um, ways of the deep state are being seen. It's like they're not hiding them that much anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of people are waking up to that. And some people, maybe for the first time, uh, for us, we've known about it for a long time, you even more than me. It wasn't really my wheelhouse. I always knew it was around, but it really wasn't what I was focusing on. And of course, you know, living with David, he focuses on it a lot more. So um, it's really obvious. And then for a lot of people now, I believe they're seeing it for the first time, which could be really disturbing. Oh, yeah. There's, look, I, I definitely believe we're in the middle of a great awakening. And uh, there's so many positive things that we could be focusing on right now mm -hmm. in terms of like, it's, it's wonderful that the thing that we just went through isn't really that dangerous for most people beyond either a comorbidity or above a certain age range. That is a great thing because in the beginning, we were here in a 3.4% rate 
and now it's down to like 0.17%, which is exactly what we were telling you when we first started this stuff back in April. And what's interesting is I know that you didn't email out this announcement because it was really quickly, mm -hmm. but there's a possibility that you're being shadow banned because normally we would have like 26,000 people. Right. There's like a thousand. Only a thousand. Wow. Okay. And it held at like 1,126 for 10 minutes. It was like not one person. Oh, really? Came. Still there. It's, it's still, still there. there. So it's still there. So okay, for so as we got a new as, algorithm. Everybody. As long as we've been on, it's been 1126 the number of people. Not one person has left, and not one person has come on. So, but welcome to Club you know, 1126, yeah. everybody. This is it. You get to be one of the 1126. <laughs> But we also want to make sure, so we really don't oh, know how many people are on. Maybe there's more. Well, uh, look at our previous numbers and, and then the, the demand that's built up. Really so. the main reason that we have come here today is to continue to stand for peace and to continue to call for peace. And when we get together and we have so many beautiful souls like you together in one place, what we choose to do is focus on love and peace so that that's what we are choosing to create. We want to live in a world that's a beautiful world that honors plants and animals and the good people of the earth. And it's really each one of us that makes that stand and co-creates that. So we did come together for that too. And also want to, you know, you're doing a little revelation here, the David yeah. Alcock revelations. Yeah. So let me, let me monologue a little longer. Yeah. Maybe we'll bring Danny up in a minute. Yeah, they want to see Danny too. Okay. So um, thank you, Elizabeth. I appreciate that. It's, it's, it's a vast, vast scope of what's really going on. And it's important also that we not get distracted into the if it bleeds, it leads mentality where we're only looking at one thing at a time because there's multiple very important things going on here. And Danny, one of the things you were talking about was the new uh, space thing that just happened. Mm -hmm. And you're very excited about that. So you want to come up and talk about that a little bit? It's show and tell. <laughs> Absolutely. Don't forget to look into the lens, not the screen. I got it. <laughs> so hi, everybody. I think it's all a little this, bit more over this way. I think that all the stuff that's occurring right now in our lives are focusing us to look, pull outward and to drive fear inward. Well, so in talking to Elizabeth and in talking to David and looking at the audience and the kind of consciousness that they are trying to drive and bring forth to really make the world a better place with all types of information, we started looking at there is a basic place we have to go to. We are spiritual beings, great, powerful, and mighty spiritual beings with dignity, direction, and purpose. And until you focus on that, you allow things to affect your dignity. And in the course of it, it creates this madness that's happening around us. So we're working on creating a program that incorporated the spiritual identity of yourself as I have witnessed through four of these experiences and I have spent more than 42 years as a hospice volunteer so I understand where that fear in place comes from. And those experiences are near-death experiences. He's yeah. been dead four times and he's been to the other side and he sees what's going on when you get over there. <laughs> and I keep getting up to get back to you. So here's what the point is this. Whether we stop and realize that yesterday a car company made in America drove two guys out to Cape Canaveral, Cape Kennedy, and put them on top of a car company's rocket and flew them into orbit so that they connect with the satellite, the space station, orbiting in conjunction with the Russians. And not only that, that rocket ship came back and landed on a platform sitting in the ocean. Okay? So what has just happened is a revolution in the space program and space exploration and the capability of what our consciousness will do. You got to pay attention to that. Equal to all this madness. And if you can't hear them enough, Elizabeth, you just got to turn up those sliders. Okay. Okay. And I agree with David and Elizabeth on this. When you're dealing with electing a president of the United States and at the critical juncture of where the world is and all these issues are, it's amazing to the limits that politic, pol political operatives will go to to generate separation, race riots, 
all of this stuff to instill fear and control to, for whatever reason to change power or to hold on to power. I'm not pointing the finger, I'm just saying what's happening. So I think that we have to get back to our deep rooted truth, a spiritual being in this human experience, and let that learn through this program that David and Elizabeth and I were talking about. Let, let that learn to give you parameters to operate from a spiritual point of view to see more clearly how to deal with all this other stuff that's coming at us. But please pay attention that Tesla uh, or Ubers took two guys that docked in space at the Soviet, I mean at the Russian American space station and they're going to be there four months with those conversations but that has happened and the rocket came back and landed on a floating platform in the ocean that is revolutionary everybody so thanks for letting me say that sure sure thanks Danny and listen <laughs> love you everybody and thanks for being here <laughs> yeah so we're we're not going to be uh stopping and but part of part of again me staying out of the spotlight is uh watching another another person who has the same first name as me getting completely deplatformed and no facebook no youtube nothing and i did not agree with the sentiments that were being raised uh regarding certain theories about things but that still is a very chilling event that we should all be paying attention to that that there is no limit to the reprisal of you simply sharing an opinion if it's not the opinion that's authorized and so i see th there was something that uh, one of my insiders we call bruce told me years ago uh he was talking about large gongs that they have in tibet and he said that if you or other countries uh, it's not just tibet but if you hit the gong in the middle, it's a very thin piece of metal. If you hit it in the middle really hard right off the bat, you'll crack it. So what you have to do is warm it up to get the big, big, huge gong sound. And what they'll do is they start hitting it around the edge with the mallet, and they get it warmed up and warmed up, similar to what Elizabeth does with the singing bowls. And when they already have enough vibration and starts to make this kind of background sound, then they hit it in the middle and they get the big, they get the big ring. So I always like to be positive, but I also like to be pragmatic in that perhaps the things that we're seeing now are the warming up of the edge of the gong before there is a hit in the middle. Therefore, we have to be at least theoretically aware that other things could happen besides what we were seeing. And I find it interesting that pretty much everybody was expecting that we were going to have to go through all this again with social distancing, even to the point of when and where, that, you know, there's going to be another one, it's going to be, you know, closer to the election, of course, and everybody's going to have to go back inside, and it's all going to happen again, and, you know, let's enjoy the, you know, short bursts that we have. So that's like a magician where you got this one thing in your hand, oh, there's going to, there might be another one, there might be another one, and then something in a totally different vein starts to happen. Now, it is a murder, and we're not going to engage in other theories about that at this time. It's definitely a murder. It's definitely real. I, I say that with no hesitation whatsoever. So you're going to see all kinds of weird stuff. People trying to deny that the guy was really a police officer. Maybe he was an undercover agent, or maybe he was an agent before he became a police officer. People trying to say that, he didn't, that George Floyd didn't actually die. Uh, come on, it's ridiculous. This is not true. Uh, and so we're not helping by engaging in offbeat weird theories. At the same time, there is a long-standing thing that can be observed of various organizations that could see opportunity where other people only see tragedy. If there is an outrageous event that takes place, if there is an outrageous event that upsets everyone, certain groups that are that violent in nature and maliciously minded could look at that kind of a thing and say, could we use a, a, an unexpected event, a natural, naturally occurring event, and infuse it with energy 
that takes it down a very dark path. And when we start to look back at the history, a lot of dots are going to connect. I will probably not say what I think the dots are, uh, but I'm going to be writing an article soon. I'm going to try to get it out this week, and I'm going to show a lot of things and how those pieces interconnect because uh, a lot of people are talking about the 2012 Olympics opening ceremonies, and you go in there to, I believe it is, it's 38 minutes in, or it's 43 minutes in, or 48 minutes in. It's one of those three. I think it's 48 minutes in. That's, wh that's what it is. It's 48 minutes in to the Olympics 2012 opening ceremony. So if you haven't done this, without me even front-loading you, just go in there, start around 47 minutes and 30 seconds or something like that, the 22, it's got 12 and a half million views right now. 2012 Olympics opening ceremonies. What you're going to see is a very, very strange situation where there's all these children. They're in all these hospital beds. And the beds have, have light on them. They're, they're being lit up. And then there's one girl who is accosted by a gigantic Voldemort demon that rises up. And it's like 40, 50 feet tall. Uh, and it looks like very similar to the Grim Reaper. Uh, there, is a, there is an Asian nurse who appears as this other, there's, a, there's also a, these, so the kids, let me, let, let me back up a little bit because this is kind of important. You go look at the comments on this video now. You go look at what are the top comments on this video now and how many people are seeing this, right? Because it's, it's thought of as possible example of predictive programming. Uh, you go back and you look at this thing and what you see is that there's all these kids in hospital beds and then all of these people dressed up in monster costumes that are all black with lots of, of you know, long dreadlock type of features, which is an African-American type of feature, right? Dreadlock type of features on their hair, but they're all black and they just have green eyes and it appears to represent some sort of plague, okay? And so they overrun the children, and which is, there's lots of dance moves that are symbolic of death. And then this one girl in her bed gets elevated about, you know, 40 feet off the ground in front of this demon that's twice the size of her with the face of Voldemort from the Harry Potter thing. At the same time, you have uh, the... Mike Oldfield song Tubular Bells playing, or at least a variant of that, and they call it that. And that song was the score for the movie The Exorcist, which is about demonic possession and, and satanic evil. So you got Tubular Bells playing, you got these, these bug people running around infecting these kids in their hospital beds. Then you have the one girl who gets elevated in front of this. Also, you have another scene of a guy who looks a lot like the Prime Minister of Great Britain in a bed, in a hospital bed, okay? And then there's also a, a, a weird cage that comes in with these people dressed up with horse heads, and one of them has a big uh, net, and there, there is an Asian nurse who is portrayed in front of this thing that looks kind of like another version of the Grim Reaper. So that's one of them. Another one that you got to look at is Madonna's performance at the Eurovision, was it 2019 or 2020 awards? Remember if it was 19? It was 19. So Eurovision 2019 with Madonna. And this is the next one, okay, because this is also just crazy. Uh, you have to look at how the whole thing starts out in what appears to be a church, but it's all blood red and dark. And the main feature in the middle is this arch. Well, that's not just any old arch. If you are studying the things that I've studied, you can look this up, the Arch of Baal, B-A-A-L. It is an altar to sacrificing. And I'll say no more than that, but that's the prominent feature in the middle of this stage. Madonna rises up through the arch. Uh, there's like a demonic face in the background behind. And then there's all these people wearing these black mass type of robes, like black robes and all that at the beginning. She has an X over her eye, and she's got this very strange ritual black robe on. And then she starts dancing with people who are all wearing gas masks. 
and then she begins to she kill them by blowing on them and her breath shows up in the performance as fire and then there's all these images of them dying off and then they bring in these pillars and they show a stargate type of thing and they show the stars and it's like this whole new world that's been born the space the new the real space age but it's with all these fires burning and, and after she blows and all these people just get killed and then there's also some very strange stuff that she says out loud as if it's this deep state group talking to us as humanity basically saying we don't deserve to be alive is what it sounds like to me you can, if you remember it, come on up. <laughs> come on up. I don't really remember. That's just it. Something about what? Many here will not meet the future. Many here will not, many of you will not meet the future. It was something like that. All right. Now, last but not least, uh, I want to direct you to something else. And again, if I had more time, but this thing is unfolding very rapidly, I would have the visuals. I don't, but you can look them up and feel free to borrow this, steal this, use this. I would prefer if you give me credit if this is the first time you've heard of this, but. So let's talk about the highly disturbing satanic music video girl who won like all of the Grammys this year, uh, Billie Eilish. And again, I do not blame her personally. I don't blame artists personally. They're just doing what they're told to do. They should not be hurt. They should not be attacked. They should not be criticized even. It's just that they're following a set of actions that they were told to do. We saw that Lady Gaga used to do really, really weird stuff. And then she comes out with this wonderful movie called A Star Is Born. So Stephanie, I appreciate that. And again, when I was doing these videos before and there was this One World at Home event that was going to come out, I was worried that she might do something odd or ritualistic or symbolic. That did not happen. So the Star is Born movie to me shows Stephanie was giving you a wink and showing you how staged this all is. It's all the big six media companies, whether it's music, whether it's movies, it's, it's really very, very centralized and interconnected. But Billie Eilish has been going out there with these videos that have an absurd level of, of popularity. Whether that's all real or not, we don't really know. But the videos purport to have many, many tens, if not hundreds of millions of views. These videos are incredibly disturbing. There are videos of, of Billie Eilish with her eyes completely black, with demonic wings coming off of her back, and all this black stuff coming off her face. Her hair's all wet. She looks like Satan. And what is she doing in these videos? She is walking around in regular suburban-looking American neighborhoods that are all on fire. And she's being possessed by a demonic force right. that you're seeing happen. It's rising up mm -hmm. as this is all going on. Well, it's pretty freaking strange to go back there and look at the beginning of the Grammy Awards to the outfit that Billie Eilish was wearing as she walked in. Because when you go look for this, you'll see that she is wearing a, a, a mask. She's wearing a black mask that covers this part of her face. It goes over the ears. It's exactly the same as what everybody's wearing now, but this was in January, the end of January, okay? Before we ever knew there would be lockdown, social distancing here, she goes and she wears this outfit. In fact, uh, if we cut to the slide angle, I can probably pull it up right now just so that you guys can see this. Hold on. You will in a second. I, I, this is good enough that I want to put it in there, so. Because you guys will be able to start to see some things here pretty quickly. All right, so. Okay, camera five. Camera five, and. So, let's do this. All right, so uh, this is how we're going to do it. Whoops. See, I, I can't even type because I'm trying to. So we do that, and then we say, uh, all right, look at that. My goodness. My goodness, everybody. How did she get this idea? Who gave her the idea to wear this silly getup? Oh, it's not showing. It's not showing. Why is it not showing? We don't 
All right, I see, I see. Hold on, everybody. I got to set it to mirror. That's what happened. See, this is like a real-time dumpster fire, everybody. What, what, you know, we're, we'll get over it together. Figuring out our technology. All right. Constantly. He's dying on stage. <laughs> Isn't that something, everybody? And, and so she takes the mask off a little bit and, and whispers, like, shh, don't say anything. Right? But she's, she's posing with this weird, weird, weird mask on. Okay? And she's got all these images all these photographs and remember she won as you can see in this image she won all the majority of all the grammys were won by her right and she's with this mask that's now something that has become very very obvious to everyone something that's a part of all of our lives right that's kind of strange that's kind of strange don't you think isn't it a little weird okay then it gets weirder right because then let me do this, okay. Then we have this guy, Tyler the Creator, and he comes out wearing this uh, this this blonde wig, but let's let's do his performance here because in his performance he's dancing and he's rapping and everything around him is on fire. Okay, there's this fire. And it's a it's a suburban neighborhood. Uh, in fact, let's just let's just do this. Tyler the Creator Grammys Fire. And then you'll see, and this is like the first performance. It's got houses burning, and uh, and then he falls down at the end, and he and he falls over. Okay. So let's cut back to camera for a second. So. So Billie Eilish, who has made these videos that have images of everybody's houses on fire, and she's shape-shifting into a demonic creature, she walks into the Grammys wearing a mask that now is ubiquitous in our world. Nobody knew about it back then. Nobody expected this. I mean, yeah, you could say it was happening in Wuhan, it's disturbing, but even then, why would you want to look up to that? Why would you want to make that part of your costume? Isn't it bad enough that these people are dying of this thing? Why would you kind of like maybe even make fun of that by wearing that mask? Then Elizabeth and I were had the unique experience of going to Steven Tyler's Grammy viewing party. He invited us. And so he did show up during the event. Uh, so he was at the Grammys and then he also came over to the Grammys party. This was a fundraiser. There was a lot of people there and they were there to donate. Um, and so we also donated, I believe we donated uh, $2,500 that day, it was either $2,000 $2,500, to this charity that he had, which was called Janie's Got a Fund. If you remember from the 80s, Stephen had a song called Janie's Got a Gun, and it was talking about a, a, a teenage girl who had suffered sexual violence and escaped and then actually killed her abuser. That's what the song's about. Uh, the charity that he has is devoted to keeping people from falling onto the streets after they exit the foster care system. So right now, when you get to be 18, you no longer have foster parents and you just get dumped out. And there's not really any transitional plan for kids who are in foster care to be able to have a transition into adult life. If you don't figure it out by the time you're 18, you just get dumped. So Stephen's charity allows for there to be transitional services that help people and there were some donors there with very big pockets Stephen himself donated some very valuable things he had including he donated his his wonderful motorcycle he had donated a, a very expensive sports car it was over a million dollars in previous years so he's really committed to this and it was really cool for me to be at this event where every time we were cutting away from the grammys Stephen's thing was showing these images of abuse survivors and getting you aware of the fact that it's happening to people when they're very young girls who are talking about this on video this is this is exposing the fact of how damaging those types of violence are to people and it was raising consciousness raising awareness so we had a very different experience than everybody else now when we had gotten our 
outfits together and we drove over to this thing, we had not been paying attention to the news. So the Grammys start, the first person who comes on is Alicia Keys. Uh, the first person that I was really paying attention to uh, as we sat down and, and started to really watch the, the, the show. And there's this weird energy and I'm like, uh-oh, something, something crazy has happened. Sure enough, Kobe Bryant had died of a very weird helicopter crash. And I've said this already before, but there were some very strange things that predated that crash that looked as if they knew that it was coming. And one of them was a Chamberlain Heights cartoon similar to the Simpsons kind of thing where you see Kobe in a helicopter, the helicopter crashes, he's got his trophies, like the Grammy trophies, he's got his trophies in his hands, and he's dead on the ground, and these people are going, oh crap, it's Kobe Bryant. There was another Nike uh, commercial in which, uh, I believe it's Kanye West at the end, shows up in a helicopter, and the helicopter apparently crashes, and there's a fire on top of the building that Kobe was on, and you don't see him at the end. So that's another one. And then there was yet another one, which is strange, where there was a commercial with Kobe where he's driving around with a kid in a peanut costume and they keep driving into things as if they're gonna crash. And there's a lot of, a lot of symbolism in that commercial. And it ties in with this Mr. Peanut weird thing they were doing for the Super Bowl where there was this ad campaign, Mr. Peanut has died. And they used the hourglass of Mr. Peanut's uh, eyeglass that looks like the letter Q, which to me was pretty interesting based on the letter between P and R, as I'm saying, being the voice of what we're calling the Alliance here, that they actually are doing good, whether you understand this or not. I believe they are. There's, I've presented enormous evidence to support that viewpoint. Uh, and they are telling us right now it is a marathon, not a sprint but they're saying that the landing looks good, and they're also describing a sequence, a 10-week sequence of declassification events in which each week the events that we get declassified are gonna get bigger and bigger, and we're on like week four now, or maybe right at the beginning of week five. Out of a 10, what they said at least is a 10-week sequence. Just because it stops at 10 doesn't mean that's the end, but at least it's the first 10. So let's go back to the Grammys now. So Billie Eilish, first of all, even before the Grammys aired, okay, you have widespread mainstream media acknowledgement that the whole thing is rigged because the director of the Grammy Awards resigns, this woman, due to harassment that she suffered. And all this stuff comes out about how it's all rigged and there's no real voting taking place. They just give it to who they want. And even in, in, in spite of that, they moved forward, they gave all the awards to this one girl who comes in with the social distancing mask on and has these highly disturbing satanic videos that are showing cities on fire, towns, suburbs on fire in America, or what we would assume is America. Okay, so then we walk in there and we find out Alicia Keys is talking about something bad has happened and it turns out to be Kobe Bryant. That's the first that Elizabeth and I had heard about this. So we're getting to see it as if it was, for us it was new because we hadn't had time to look at any news. Well, okay, Kobe Bryant's helicopter pilot done this a hundred times and you also have to remember that helicopters have altimeters on them. They have very advanced sensing equipment that looks ahead and looks below. And if you're getting anywhere near an obstacle that could hurt you, you get these alarms going off. If you actually go back and look at the incident report, the helicopter drops in altitude for thousands of feet at a very high speed when it's in the air. That is not crashing into something. That's just simply plunging from the air. But again, there's gyroscopes, there's stabilizers, there's GPS. There's no reason for your helicopter to just plunge down out of the air. So. He might have landed on the ground, but he didn't start that way. So what do we have here? We have something that is eerily similar to a previous Grammy Awards ceremony in which Whitney Houston was going to be performing, and she's staying in the hotel before her performance, and she ends up dead in the bathtub, face down in the bathtub, and then the whole thing turns into a memorial service. 
So there was speculation even back then of foul play. And then this Kobe Bryant thing looks very foul. So what we're seeing is the sacrifice of an African-American, in this case, hero. Okay. Think about what just happened. Think about what just happened. Sacrifice of an African-American who is loved by everyone. And that starts off the whole service, this whole religious service, which is what, the way I look at it, okay, what they do with these things. And so it's all traumatic. And then, even despite how traumatic this was, and the shocking loss of, of a beloved African-American icon, then the very first performance that we get of any real music in the show is this guy, Tyler, the creator. And another thing that's interesting is that the name Tyler, and again, I know my, Steven Tyler, okay, I'll, I get that, but Steven Tyler, his real last name's Talarico, that's commonly known, it's in his book. So he changed it to Tyler, so that just happened on its own. I don't think there was any foul play here, but it's important to understand, and I was the first person to explain this to Steven, actually, that if you're looking at Freemasonry, there is a guy with swords who guards the doorway into the Masonic Lodge. And he prevents anybody from getting in. In other words, he has the authority to literally slash you down and kill you if you try to get into the lodge. What's the name of the guy at the doorway to the Masonic Lodge who kills you if you get in? He's called the Tyler. It's true. Go look it up. Tyler the Creator. And he's wearing a, a, a strange outfit that's, that's sort of like the Masonic tile, except that instead of it being black and white tile, it's red and white tile. And then again, let's cut back to that slide real quick. Here he is falling, right? And uh, there's... Oh, yeah, so, so all these images of everything is on fire, and it was just a... It didn't... It, you know, the energy of the way he was talking, he had this very... Uh, raspy voice it was disturbing you see here he's got that you know there's a fire i mean it was not oh and and the gun to the head right so so there's all that as well let's just click on one of these at random and right so he's got the blonde wig on his head it's it's very strange so anyway i'll probably get in trouble if i if i air all this stuff but uh yeah anyway we're not going to do that. Let's go. Okay, so uh, let me let me cut back to something else, just in case we need that again. Okay. Oh, here's another really good one, everybody. So you can really see like how sick this was. Okay. This. So so you if you just look at this, you got that slide up. It is. I wonder. If, yeah. Okay. So. And, and, and these are people's homes, folks. These are people's houses, okay? They're talking about people setting each other's houses on fire. Yeah. Now, this is, this is something that's interesting, okay? Let's go back to the... my. Uh, so, predictive programming, right? You sacrifice an African-American in a suspicious way, in a very upsetting way, and then immediately after everybody's watching this show and processing the grief of the loss of an African-American man under suspicious circumstances, the first thing you see is this performance that encourages you to be angry and violent, encourages you to go out and set things on fire and create riots. And then there are other scenes because we continue to watch this throughout the the thing because we were at this ceremony we didn't really want to watch the grammys we just were there for stephen but we were trying to uh keep ourselves occupied and so we're watching the show and there's one scene of fire after another after another on the grammys and so this is this is, and we don't we even really want to watch this stuff normally, but here we were. Stephen invited us, actually said, please come to my event, dress like a rock star, which I did. And then another thing, which I, I kind of find interesting, again, first of all, Stephen was um, giving us these commercials that were not the commercials that the mainstream media wanted you to see, but every commercial, every time there was a break from the Grammys, you're seeing these young girls who had been molested and they're talking about it and they're exposing 
how bad this is to happen and, and that we're donating to help them. So Stephen is very much not a part of this and I'm sorry anybody who thinks otherwise. That's always been my belief. And um, I know Stephen very well as a person. I know that he's not involved in anything like this because I've spoken to him extensively. So, uh, but all celebrities right now are, are taking a really, really hard hit. It's not a good time to be a celebrity, to say the least. So, what's going on here? Is it possible that a hypnotic code was put into people's minds? Is it possible that a hypnotic code could have been put in death of an African American, rioting, looting, burning? That those two things were sandwiched together so you have the grief of losing Kobe Bryant, the greatest living African American hero that there was, the number one guy. Arguably, right? I mean, you could say LeBron, or you could say Shock, but it's pretty frickin'... Kobe Bryant was right up there at the top of the number one main people that you're looking at here. Then we got to go back again to the 2012 Olympics opening ceremony. You've got these bug people running out with all these kids in hospital beds. And then there's this Asian nurse that shows up at one point very prominently as the, as the death coach comes in behind her. Then we also have the fact the Federal Reserve System, before this thing started, created the 2020 US quarter dollar coin, right? And have you seen this? What's on the back of the US quarter dollar coin? A bat. And the bat coin came out before any of this stuff happened, where this allegedly developed from uh, a bat virus, okay? so. That's also very suspicious. There's a lot of really fishy stuff going on here. Then we have the fact that the Grammys get you all set up for this, pattern it in your mind. Beloved African American dies, followed by rioting and fire. So I think I've kind of made my point on that. I don't need to keep beating that one to death. But anyway, um, Stevens, Stevens' own performance at the Grammys, I don't think he had anything to do with it, but in his performance, they had him do uh, Living on the Edge, which is a song about, um, you know, it, it, where he sings, You Can't Help Yourself from Falling, and there's all these flames again. You can't help yourself from falling, and, and you know, Kobe had just fallen out of his helicopter. So, again, Steven had nothing to do with that. And I absolutely believe that, but it is curious and sad that it was so inappropriate and that they didn't change the number at the last minute. And again, that's out of his control. That's all administrative decisions that were made there. Antidote to programming. Yeah, we're trying to do the antidote to predictive programming right now. We want to expose things that are taking place so that you understand what's really <laughs> happening. Because when we were there at Stephen's event, what he was doing was exposing sexual violence. What he was doing was exposing the people who are being wronged. We donated, other people donated, and it's, it's helping to make a difference. So I want to reassure you that what we see happening in the world right now is not the end. This is not the dark night of the soul that just turns into a bottomless pit. What I think is going on here is a major, major upheaval where if you look at the normal pace of historical events and the severity of those events, we are seeing what some would call novelty on an unprecedented scale. The novelty of these historical events is, is pretty unprecedented. We've never had the whole world closed down before due to anything, whether it was a virus or any other reason. That did happen. And regardless of whether you think there's anything nefarious behind it or not, the resulting effect is devastating, devastating economic damage. But a lot of people are also noticing that we are seeing the reopening take place with the stock market actually doing really well. So the financial damage that has been done to the world only affects people at the mom and pop level. It affects Main Street. It has not affected Wall Street. Wall Street is doing better than ever. And there has been an absolutely massive wealth transfer away from the lower and middle class to the 0.01% top levels. And that's very sad.
Uh, it's, there, there are estimates about how long it could take for our economy to recover from what's going on right now, that it could be 10 years just to get back to the way it was before this thing started, which again was very, very bad for Main Street. Something like 43% of businesses are probably never going to reopen. Commercial real estate, the value of commercial real estate, if you hold commercial real estate properties, of which many Americans do as small business owners or even large business owners, commercial real estate is set to have an apocalyptic decline in its value. And we've seen throughout time and space how the wealthiest individuals then sweep in and buy this stuff up for pennies on the dollar. Uh, there, I lived for five years in Virginia and three years in Kentucky, and you better believe people in the South still talk about carpetbaggers, although you never hear that term in the North. But carpetbaggers were people who swept in after the Civil War and bought up properties for pennies on the dollar because everybody was broke. And so, what's the problem? Are we having problems? Some people are hearing static. Well, you can put the headphones on and listen for yourself and see if that's happening. There's really, I'm sorry, if, if there's static, there's really nothing we can do about it. Um, so anyway, does it sound staticky to you? Okay, good. So if you are getting static, that's apparently not everybody. Uh, and again, the static thing is only if I put my hand over the, the antenna here, we pretty much figured out what that is. So look, folks. Um, you know I've been talking about this stuff for many, many, many years. I began exposing the deep state in 2007. I've talked extensively about ritual ceremonies disguised as Super Bowl halftime shows, Grammy Award ceremonies, other music award ceremonies, the Olympic ceremonies. They do this over and over again. And it's pretty shocking how few people used to see it before. So I would write articles about this on my website because nobody was putting the dots together. Nobody was looking at the gr grand scheme of this. Now it's become very, very widespread. The awakening is undeniable and it keeps coming and coming and coming and wave after wave. We've had a lot of people writing us from, you know, our friends and, and family and so forth and others saying, you know, like, hey, it's getting scary. It doesn't look very good. How do we know that the Alliance's plan is still on track? Let me be clear on this. We do not get briefings anymore. We're not getting briefings like we used to. So we don't know a whole lot more than you do. But if you actually look at the letter between P and R, you look at those websites, like I mentioned, qmap.pub. I do hear it. Um, I hear it when you move forward. When I move forward? Yeah, there you go. Just down God. There's always something horrible and frustrating that happens every time we do a live stream. That's just inevitable. So there's nothing we can do about it. But I will try not to move in ways that set this thing off. Okay? I'll, maybe if I, if I cross my arms up here, is it okay? It's when it gets in close pro proximity to something. Maybe the I have no idea. We just can't be bothered with it. We can't be bothered with it, you know? All right. Um, <laughs> there's always something crazy that happens when you're live streaming. And, not, and I try not to get mad, but sometimes I do. Oh, really? Yeah, it happens. <laughs> so, uh, let me try to get back on track here. It's, it doesn't... Look, the, uh, Satan's, Satan's greatest trick is convincing humanity that he doesn't exist. Okay? That's what the same insider, Bruce, told me. When he was talking about all the things that we see now, about how they got to ring the gong, they got to ring the outside before they hit it in the middle. I don't know if they've hit the middle yet. They might still be ringing the outside. So we have to be prepared that other stuff could happen. We have to be prepared that some crazy stuff could happen. We have to be prepared that we could see a false flag, faked alien invasion. That that could happen because that's one of the things they want to do for so long. And they, they do apparently have an enormous amount of assets in place that they could use to make it look like that was what was happening. It seems so outrageous to think that anti-gravity could be real, but come on. We had Tesla figuring it out. We had the Beefield Brown effect. Thomas Townsend Brown had figured it out with electrostatic uh, anti-gravity propulsion. The Roswell crash, 1947, they've been tinkering on that thing for well over 75 years now, trying to figure out how to get this to work. Okay? How to get 
anti-gravity to work. And so if you, if you really think that nobody's ever come up with anti-gravity, that they don't have it, then you would be mistaken. The Germans did it in 1943. That's right. The Germans did it in 1943. It goes way back, and this is nothing new. So I don't want to be a pessimist. I don't want to be a doomsayer. But I also think that if this really is the deep state's final stand, that we could get hit with more rounds. And this is just a clever thing of like, okay, a horrible public murder takes place right as everybody's wanting to calm down, get back to work. And uh, actually, yeah, you know what? I'm going to show you th this as well. So let's, let's do this, everybody. Because um, you're going to, this is, there's some things you just got to see. So let's talk about that for a minute. Um, Okay, so, are we on my slide thing? Can you see that? Yeah. Okay, that's not the one. That's not the one. That's not the one I wanted. Okay, I want, to, I want you to look at this for a minute. Can, there, can you guys see that right now? Yeah. Okay. So, best of the night. They call it, this is Rolling Stone, the, the top magazine, right? They call it best of the night. Tyler, the Creator, burns the house down. For a fleeting moment during the 60-second Grammys, Tyler, the Creator, remade the geriatric award show in his chaotic pastel image. Dressed in crimson suits like a barbershop quartet, Charlie Wilson and Boys to Men sang Earthquake. Well, Tyler's Igor persona... Hmm. Igor persona. Okay. Writhed and twitched in anticipation like a kid waiting for his moment in the spotlight. When the time finally came, he put his foot on the show's neck and for almost four minutes wouldn't let up the pressure. What does that even mean? Why would you use this wording? Mm -hmm. Why would you use this wording? Uh, an African American icon has just died. Okay? And, and you're putting your foot on the show's neck and for almost four minutes would not let up the pressure. Doesn't that sound similar to you? Doesn't that sound similar to you? Doesn't that sound like something that might have just happened? Yeah, I went there. I went there. Now, I'm not saying this is definite, but it's weird. Isn't it weird? And then it says, Tyler yelped and screamed his way through performance of New Magic Wand like a man possessed. His platinum bond, blonde bob furiously whipped back and forth. The camera shook like an L.A. earthquake. Many Igors marched down the aisles to join their father on stage, as in burning everything, right? And an Easter egg-colored suburban cul-de-sac burned. They even admitted it. It burned. By the performance's conclusion, Tyler fell backward into the flaming abyss like a demon being called home. Why the hell do they do this stuff, folks? When he finally won his first Grammy for Best Rap Album, it felt like a reprieve from the night's endless slog. I don't know if I'm going to be up here again, so bear with me, he said, cupping his gold gramophone. If Grammys are smart, next year he'll be back as creative director. Right, so the creative director should be somebody who looks like a demon being called home, who's burning a suburban cul-de-sac, who has an alternative Igor persona, and who puts his foot on the show's neck and for almost four minutes wouldn't let up the pressure, which is enough time to do what if your foot's on somebody's neck to kill them. So now, wait a minute, okay. We got the mask with Billie Eilish, we got her satanic videos, we got this weird thing that they do, and now we got Rolling Stones saying, put your foot on the neck and hold pressure for four minutes. Then they pattern what? Urban rioting, fire. So that was planted into people's minds, a trauma, the trauma of losing the top African-American sports icon, the winningest basketball player of all time, the greatest athlete of all time in many ways, Kobe Bryant. Put it in your head, plant the seed, loss of an African-American icon leads to burning and rioting. So is that really what happened? I don't know. 
but those are the kind of questions that we can legitimately ask. How, what's our actual count right now um, of alleged... Some people are saying 10,000. 10,000? 10, okay. 40. They let us have that many. <laughs> they don't tell us that. <laughs> but we, don't, we only see 1,100. <sighs> okay. So, um, anyway, I don't believe these shenanigans are going to keep on going. And I believe that we are on the verge of some very, very big disclosures. So, one of the things that we cannot deny is that stuff like this has been done. There have been false flag, uh, false flag events all throughout time in, in the Nuremberg trials after World War II. They discussed the Gliwicz incident, which is where Hitler burned his own uh, radio tower, the main radio tower at Gliwicz. And then they actually took Polish soldiers who were dead. This all came out in the Nuremberg trials. They took Polish soldiers who were already dead, and they staged the bodies at the tower to make it look like Poland did it, which gave Hitler the imprimatur to invade Poland. But he did it to himself. It was a self-inflicted wound. There's also very strong speculation that his own parliament, the Reichstag, was burned by his own people, the Reichstag fire, in order to create fascism. And then it's very disturbing that after 9-11, this five-inch thick binder of, of new litigation comes out called the Patriot Act. Right away, and anybody who was a senator who didn't want to vote for it got uh, little poisons mailed to him in an envelope from, you know, Fort Detrick, Maryland, as where it turns out that they came from. So you got to be careful, right? And uh, th this stuff is not going away, folks. So... What we are seeing now is the Alliance is really doing what they need to do to bring about peace on this planet, to bring about the change that we need to see. And so the deep state appears to be pulling out all the stops, taking an event like this and creating insurrection, sending people in from out of state. And the, the, the bonus is, too, uh, in fact, let's, let's go back to our search engine window once again here. Can you pull up that screen again? Let's do something else for a minute now so you can see this. Um, So um, I'm seeing if I can find it here. Let's actually just do this. Let's let's just do. Uh, because what we're seeing in some of the media now is that they're trying. Yeah, see here we go. Minnesota officials link arrested looters to white supremacist groups. White supremacist groups, drug cartels suspected at Minneapolis riots. Far-right infiltrators and agitators in George Floyd protests. Widely broadcast real-time video images challenge our beliefs about who is really protesting and for what reason. So here we go. Courthousenews.com. Minnesota officials link arrested looters to white supremacist groups. So you can see here all this stuff. Um, let's go down and find the part where they say... St. Paul Mayor Melvin Carter said most of the arrests made last night were of people from out of state. Most of the arrests. Right? And while there's a group of folks that are sad and mourning, there seems to be another group using Mr. Floyd's death as a cover to create havoc. And then Department of Safety Commissioner John Harrington said they are contact tracing the arrested and added that an investigation is underway about white nationalist groups posting online to encourage their members to use the protests as a cover to create chaos. Some of the 40 arrests made were of people linked to white supremacist groups. The people that are doing this are not Minneapolis residents. They are coming largely from outside the city, outside the region, to prey on everything we have built. Okay. So, is it really white supremacist groups? There might be some. But we also have to look at the fact, like the president is saying, that this could be Antifa, that this could be fascist left-wing groups, and that the ultimate purpose could be useful to the deep state. In other words, if a crisis takes place, these agent provocateurs, 
go in and, and two things happen. First of all, 17 cities are burning, but there's also a number of articles I've read that say that the scope of the burning, the scope of the rioting is vastly less than other things we had before, like the Rodney King riots. Thank God, because what that means is that normal people who are not part of these things are not getting sucked in. They're not taking the bait. We succeeded, folks, because this was a massive, massive effort of white men coming in from out of state. You said most of them, I showed it to you right there, okay? Most of the arrests are white guys coming in from outside the state, burning where you eat your food, burning your grocery store, burning the police that will protect you. And now it's just a question of like, okay, who is it, right? So if it is deep state oriented, what are they doing? On the one hand, they want you to be worried about the collapse of society. They want you to be living in constant fear. Stay home. Don't go outside. Don't, don't feel like everything's safe now. Stay inside. It's dangerous, you know, and uh, it's all happening under this one administration. The colossal failures of this administration, the catastrophic bungling that they've done of this, you can't really handle an unprecedented event that we've never seen before well, right? There's no really good way to get through this. So if, if the president makes any statement that could be seen as provocative, if he makes any mistake right now, they are going to dive all over it like hyenas, okay, in the media. So we have to be aware of this. We have to be aware that we're supposed to be focused on an election right now. And you got this guy who says, hey, if you vote for Trump, you ain't black. Are you effing kidding me? I mean, he lost the vote. He lost the vote. It's gone. Because what is this? This is Jim Crow, old whitey, same old stuff, same old playbook. If, 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 you, if you don't vote for me, you're not black, right? And then we got to forget that. And we got to forget the fact that now there's this woman that's come forward and said that he abused her. But of course, the media that supports this election going in his direction, Oh, that's not a big deal. You know, it, it happened a long time ago, da, da, da. But if it had been the president, oh my God, they'd be all over it, right? So I do want you to look at this stuff. Do I, I always have to say these disclaimers. I'm sorry for those of you who are, you know, on the side of the letter between P and R, but some people get so upset and they can't see anything positive about this president. They can't see anything positive about this administration. But it's really freaking weird that for the whole four-year presidency, the media has been in a non-stop, 99 to 100% total hate attack meltdown in which lies and treachery and treason are being used. Thank God General Michael Flynn got free because we have personal information. We know for a fact that he was very, very centrally involved in the alliance. No question whatsoever. And we also know for a fact that when certain emails came out in 2016, right before the election in October, he was brave enough to tweet more than once in support of those children. And he put it on his actual Twitter page. And very soon after that, this whole thing shows up where he got thrown out. And now we are finding out that it was all fraudulent and it was all set up. And there's this big, big thing. Okay. So we, we donated to Flynn to support that campaign of him. I encourage you to do the same. He needs your help right now. So General Michael Flynn does have a way you can donate to him. I would highly encourage that you do that. We need his help in this. And I encourage you to remember also that there are many, many patriots and many, many good people in the intelligence community, in the military, in the police who are doing the right thing, who are trying to help our planet go into a peaceful level. So, of course, the, so, the, 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 the energy, really, if you want to look at it this way, there's a, there's a force in the human psyche of negativity, of darkness, of fear, of depravity, of perverted sexuality, of violence, of sickness, illness, disease, pain, fear. Not being able to look at your own core traumas as a child, and so instead of healing from those traumas and learning to love people, People, certain people respond by becoming perpetrators because they were perpetrated against when they were kids. That doesn't make it right. But this is what happens. We're talking about the potential of an intergenerational cult 
that's been running things behind the scenes for centuries, if not millennia, that's finally being opposed and brought down, even though they have an overwhelmingly large amount of power, it's a beautiful thing when their own military effectively turns against them, which is what we're seeing. This will all be understood in time as a historical uprising where the military no longer would support what it was being told to do by these sociopathic individuals. So as a result of that, we now have this technology that we can use, which is the technology of mass meditation and prayer. We know for a fact that we can reduce global crime and terrorism and fatalities by 72% by simply getting a meditation going. And the meditation effect that I've talked about so much was scientifically proven. There's 39 different studies that were published in scientific journals regarding how a group of 7,000 people were able to notably reduce war and crime and terrorism in the world. And we have 12,000 people watching right now, so that's almost double the amount that we need. So while I still have you all here before we go off into a five hour monologue, I don't even know how long I've been talking. Let me see if I, 90, okay, that's perfect. So what I'd like to do now is to uh, start to steer us towards the solution, okay? Because we can talk about the deep state, the possibility that they are being defeated by the Alliance, which I believe is absolutely real, very much on track. Uh, the letter between P and R recently said the instrument landing systems look good. We're coming in for a landing. This thing is going to work. They keep telling us it's going to be spectacular. It's going to be mind blowing. People are going to want to give the truth back. The George Floyd murder is incredibly disturbing. And what we're going to learn is incredibly disturbing on a much, 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 much bigger level. So we need to take this stuff without getting crazy and without burning our cities down. And we need to be aware that there are going to be forces that will take any peaceful protest that is done right now, any gathering of people, and send in these white guys from another state to come in, whoever the hell they are. And whether it's white supremacists or whether it's Antifa, it shouldn't be happening. And so we can control this, actually. We have the tools. I'm one of the few people alive on Earth who can marshal up over 7,000 people live to actually use this technology in real time. So we're going to use it. You better believe we are. Like Do you want to say something about this? Okay. Because yes. this is where we're getting into the meditation part. Yeah. And we want to take that technology and use it for good purposes. Amen. Just because, <laughs> uh, you know, for me, as I listen to all of this stuff and see it, I feel this like constriction in my body and the weight feels so heavy to become aware of all of this planned, you know, darkness. And so I just want to talk a little bit about how I see it and how I deal with it because I'm around him all the time and I have a different way. Is that darkness then? <laughs> no, but he's, he You're talks around about the it. Well, you see, he talks about it for like five hours at a time sometimes. <laughs> we can switch the angles if you want. We can start um, doing that. We can follow the rabbit. <laughs> Danyan's moving us around here. No problem. So, um, just look into the lens. Number maybe. one, I would like to say that like for me, it's really important to stay really connected to my practices and disciplines. So for me, that's Qigong and yoga and contemplation and meditation and prayer and staying very positive with, with my thoughts because... And you've had quite the effect on me too. Mm -hmm. Now I'm doing stretching every day and exercises in the pool. Yeah, and he's running, you yeah, know, running twice a day. Yeah, running, lost some weight on my face. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you look really good. So yeah, you've had a good effect on me that way. So um, it's really important that as we stand in our peace and our love because that's the people that we choose to be when we are <laughs> when we're responding to the darkness um that we don't become it that we don't get infected by it and so it's really important how you choose your words and how you wield that power that you have, the power of your word and the power of your deed when responding to these types of things. And so for me, I, I weigh my words um, and I think about them 
and sometimes I'll have David read something that I write or Daniel read something that I write, I, I have consultants that I say, you know, what do you think about this? Because I know that um, what we say is important, every single one of us, every single one of you, what you think is important, your thoughts have a effect on you. A negative thought will decrease your immunity and your personal power, and a positive thought will increase your immunity and your energy. So it's true. the way that I see it is that- It's healthy to be positive. <laughs> yeah. It's important. <laughs> uh, each one of us is responsible for ourselves and cultivating an environment of peace and love and joy and abundance within ourselves first, and then it goes to our most intimate relationship, to our pets, to our friends, to our family, to the people around us and to the world. And so the way I see it and the way I deal with it is I stay, I'm aware of it, but I don't like to get too involved with it. And if I say something, it's to put a stake in the ground for peace, to, to like strike a chord like on a guitar to tune the instrument if it's going out of tune. And so that's how I see um, the medicine of words and deeds when interacting with something like this. <laughs> Daniel's like, stop, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he's coming over We're here. Getting all three of us now. <laughs> Holy, this is getting serious, folks. <laughs> Watch everybody. When you listen to what is trying to, is happening, the world is changing, and this in, the ascension story is showing itself in many ways, from a global perspective to a locally burning. You know, I was listening to David. Who in the world would burn down their own grocery store? Who would go into town and burn down your own grocery store and your only source of food? Who would do that? And when you look at how the playbook sees itself, you see a grander picture at part. And thanks to David and what Elizabeth is doing. But, but I wanted to say is this. In the course of all this pulling us outward, we have to turn truly inward. And we have to remember the true power we have is that that nature to, to connect with each other like you 12,000 people. But I'd like to say one other thing. I'm reading all the chats, and you are brilliant, <laughs> smart, <laughs> aware, you know, and to watch the chats and the conversation that people are putting up is a pleasure for me to be here and do it. So I'm 100% for meditation and prayer, mm -hmm. and I like that this is a part mm -hmm. of the program. And I love each and every one of you, and I hope that you keep coming back to find that point of view and perspective that empowers your life to make the best decisions. And I hope the program we're developing about how to view yourself as a spiritual being and how to use a lot, utilize the energies that are, are being generated by those trying to control us, to utilize those same energies in this ascension and transition to benefit ourselves, our family, and the world we live in. So thank you. Amen. We're going to be doing a program with you soon. Yep, that's mm -hmm. right. <laughs> going back to the. Book. Yeah, I mean it's it's awkward because we have uh, we have our own essential business activities that we're continuing forward with, and that this, these riots have made it very difficult for me to promote my book, which is actually coming out in like one day. Right. Um, it's June second, and it's the new book, Awakening in the Dream. We already have enough pre-orders. It's like over 8,000 pre-orders, so it should be very high on the New York Times bestseller list when it comes out, if it's done fairly. But we have no idea if it'll be on there or not. We just don't know. Uh, but that book is an incredible spiritual download. It's called Awakening in the Dream. And so I'll just say this really briefly. It is about to come out, and it will blow your mind because I'm showing so many examples of this 20-plus year time loop and when we did the uh, provable pandemic prophecy video, I encourage you to go back and, and watch that because this, uh, <laughs> it's like left is right, right is left. Um, those prophecies are unbelievable. And it said June 3rd, July 2nd, people are still going to be talking about this. Uh, so it's interesting that the timing of that prophecy that I aired in April is actually all kind of bearing out. but. Look, um, the book is really cool, and we are going to be doing a, another class like the one we did before, but with Danian. And uh, Danian wants to give his kind of, if you will, final download on, on what's going on in the world, the ascension process. 
So we're putting all that together. In fact, after we're done here, we're going to be doing more to write that, and we're mm -hmm. going to be launching it this coming week. If you are already in the other class that we did, we're going to have a special interview live with him on Wednesday for, for the subscribers. And then we're going to continue to move forward with the class the way we had it before. I'll be involved. Elizabeth's going to be involved. And that's all coming up, hopefully as early as next week. We're going to try to just not spend a whole lot of time uh, selling it and just kind of get right into it so that you guys can have an ongoing resource with us of that. And I would like to say that, you know, just the recent events that have happened um, really broke our hearts. And so Absolutely. we have been feeling that for the last couple of days, you know, what happened to George Floyd was really heartbreaking for us and we feel the pain and then watched what started to happen, the conflagrations and the, the anger. And again, really the best solution that we can come up with is to continue to maintain our peace and to honor him by calling for peace. And that That's was right. a shot that was heard around the world and violence is not going to solve violence and we have to be careful of not getting infected by violence in making a peaceful stand and so today we have come to you in order to bring a meditation and crystal bowls in honor of george and in um, remembrance of unity and seeing the spirit of people and seeing beyond colors of skins which are to me, like beautiful representations of like flowers, they're different beautiful flowers. Everybody is beautiful, everybody is worthy of respect, whatever color of skin you have. And even if they're ETs and aliens, you know, we, we need to grow up and to see that in the spirit we are all unified. So we also dedicate it to that. Well, and also my father has, my, my whole family, but especially my father spent his whole life working on trying to improve race relations through music. He was there in Vietnam during Woodstock. He was actually the main journalist for the top U.S. military base in Vietnam, Long Bin. He was the main journalist covering things like Woodstock as it was happening for the troops. And of course, that was very racially integrated. You had African-American troops, you had Latinos, everybody. So my father has focused on uh, African-American musicians like blues music, and bringing people together in these live shows. I met Buddy Guy, Junior Wells, a lot of the top blues artists with my father. And so we've always been working to improve race relations and specifically white and black, bringing us together, ending these divides. You're not gonna get a change that you wanna see through violence. I understand, but I also see that if, if in fact, like you just saw in this article, a majority, as it said, of the People coming in, doing this violence, are out of state, and they're white. There's something else going on, folks. And so we need to continue to not react violently. And let's use this technology of the mass meditation because it has been proven scientifically to drastically reduce the level of violence in the world as it's happening. And I think that the, and thereafter. the greatest win that we could have here is for black people and white people and yellow people and all the different colors of people to get closer together to unify in love and to use this as a reason to really see beyond it and not to allow it to take us into um, violence well let's get into it yes yeah, so let's, let's get into it. it all right so we'll cut to the wide shot there Done enough of these now, I'm getting quite good at this. <laughs> I'll take a nice deep breath. And just let it go. And then take another nice deep breath. Just let it go.
And as you continue breathing deeply, just let yourself relax and feel as much peace as you can. And that peace begins with your breathing. Becoming aware of each breath, whether it is a short breath or a longer breath. Becoming aware of your breathing, getting slower, more relaxed. more at peace. Just let it go. Let it all go away. All the tension, all the uncertainty. For there is a greater truth than the world of materiality and physical flesh. We all have a life between lives, a higher self. steering and guiding our evolution behind the scenes, remaining almost invisible. But right now, you have an opportunity to connect directly to the Source Self. going even deeper, following the path of your breath as it wends and weaves its way through space and time. Following your breath step by step, moving through the layers. going more and more into peace. Notice how deeply relaxed your body feels, allowing your awareness to travel to any place where there may be tension or stress remaining within you. and just let it melt away. Until all you feel is relaxation and comfort and peace and love and nothing else. easing gently into the silence. Letting your mind become concentrated into a point that you feel everything as it moves through you. And you're feeling more and more relaxed, more and more at peace, so calm, so smooth. Taking this moment for yourself.
feeling uplifted, encouraged, enlightened, revivified, rejuvenated. For we recognize that there is only one of us here. There is only one mind, one consciousness in the universe. And it is indescribably wonderful, loving, and mysterious. And as we feel this deep inspiration, positivity, reflectiveness, we are coming ever closer to embodying that awareness within ourselves such that we become the light we become the healing we embody the transformation that we are seeking and we reflect with dignity upon all the struggles that we have faced to get to this point today. The global initiation that we have all been through, social distancing, face masks, anxiety and fear, uncertainty and remorse, outrage, anger, and yes, in some people, even violence. From this vantage point, we see that the universe is just. We live in a realm governed by exacting spiritual principles and laws. Karma is absolute. And those who would seek to harm us, those who would seek to make it dangerous to breathe, those who would seek to limit our future, those who delve in the dark arts of manipulation, control, all are being exposed. We seek a truism free of violence. We seek a greater unity, a peaceful reunification. We remember the ancient strategy of divide and conquer. And we do not seek for that to be what defines us any longer. We seek unity, not separation. We seek forgiveness, not condemnation. We seek peace, not war. We seek happiness, not sadness. We seek joy, not anger. And we are becoming that which we want the world to be in this moment. We become love. We become brotherhood. 
we become loyalty. We become respect. We become thanksgiving. We become global peace. We become masters of our own universe, our own emotions, our own domain, consciously, subconsciously, superconsciously, and in all worldly terms. This day we step forward and we put our flag in the ground, the flag of peace, the flag of unity, not separation. And we hereby decree, we do not accept violence, we do not accept hatred, we do not accept judgment, we do not accept profiling. We do not accept division. We do not accept discord. What we do accept is love, happiness, smiling, reintegrating our society, healing from wounds that have gone on for centuries. We accept one another. We look in each other's eyes and we see brothers and sisters, family members, loved ones, fathers and mothers. We are grateful for the gift of life. We see that it is so precious. And I believe Elizabeth would like to share some words as well. Let's do it this way. We choose to stand for peace and the respect of all beings. We continue to make that strong stand in the most peaceful way we can. Continuing to send a voice calling for harmony. Compassion. Seeing a bigger spiritual picture. I'd like to say a prayer for George Floyd. God, Goddess Divine, One Infinite Intelligence, Angels and Sacred Ones, we ask that you surround the soul of George Floyd in your love in your wings of protection, in your wings of peace, that he may be safely guided to where he needs to go. We pray that this loss is not done in vain, and that although we may not understand how, that somehow more of your love, God, can shine through the hearts of humanity, uniting things that have been broken, weaving together the souls of good people on this planet as a shawl of protection, that we may see beyond the matters at hand and know that we are eternal spirits on an eternal timeline, and that we have come here for a reason and that although the times are challenging and tough 
we have the resources within us to move through this with the most integrity and personal power, carrying the flag of peace, carrying the flag of love and unity, and that each of our voices matter and each of our lives matter. May we continue to be rooted in our good heart. May we continue to be rooted in our good practices that we may not be tempted to fall into darker ways while it may be around us that we have the strength and the sight and the blessings of the light to walk on this path toward freedom and to make a sacred stand in the most peaceful and loving and beautiful way possible. We pray for all of the souls that are challenged at this time. We pray for peace. We pray that people can find peace in their hearts and commit to that beyond all else, find a way to alchemize what is happening, to alchemize it into something more loving. These are uncharted territories and we ask for clarity and guidance as we all navigate this in the best way we can. And we pray for the protection of those sacred warriors who are making a sacred stand for peace in many ways, in many places. We honor and bless this beautiful earth, her elements, her animals. And we ask that the light of the one be our protection the light of God be our shield, that we may feel the love of the one infinite creator. And in that, feel our own protection at this time. And we offer this up ultimately for peace because we love this beautiful world and the creatures here. Amen. In these last few minutes of the meditation, we know that what works the best is called pure consciousness. This is what the science has revealed. The uplifting gratitude, the warmth, the sense of humor, the peace, the love, the true emotional feelings of connectedness to one another, to this planet, to the universe. Understanding that any difficulties we face will pass. This too shall pass. We are going through a great test and our continued abiding desire is to be at peace, to be loving to ourselves, to be loving to each other, to love this planet and to hold the vision that is ascension, the vision that this collective dream of hell, this nightmare we have lived in can end. It can actually come to an end. We can have actual peace, sustainable prosperity, health and wellness, treating each other respectfully, and creating a new civilization in which the ways that things are now will be a forgotten memory and very much gladly a forgotten memory treating each other with kindness, and perhaps, if we are lucky enough, opening up to the greater galactic neighborhood 
of brothers and sisters out there waiting for us who may end up looking far more human than we ever thought they would. We give thanks for this opportunity to come together to raise our consciousness in favor of an outcome, to do this without the trappings of religion, without the trappings of dogma. We don't seek any cult. We are not cult leaders. We are simply using a technology that has been scientifically studied and proven to work many, many different times, creating real, tangible improvements in the lives of everyone on Earth. I ask you to consider, as you meditate right now, how your mind is helping, scientifically speaking, through provable studies, to calm people down. Just imagine on Earth right now as if it was a temperature. The heat is abating. Everyone is taking a breath. Everyone is calming down. Everyone is relaxing. Everyone is realizing that they do not want to participate in violence. They will not tolerate intolerance. We are moving upward and beyond these limiting beliefs, these limiting structures that have held us in artificial categories, trying to keep us labeled and divided. Labeled as if we do not all share the same breath, as if we are not all ultimately one being, managing one planet that needs our help. And we will continue to do this with trust, with honor, with responsibility, trusting the higher plan, that this is not going off the rails, this is not a world on the precipice of total destruction, but rather on the precipice of awakening, a global unfolding of a true interlasting peace. I didn't know interlasting was a word, I guess I just made one. <laughs> Got to not be too far out in meditation. Thanking all of us for what we're doing right now. Thank you for staying with us in this state of meditation. We have the numbers in our view counter right now. And we will bring about the golden age, the restoration of true peace and brotherly love on this planet and sisterly love. And so it is. All right, I think we pretty much rocked that one. Wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes. Take a nice couple of deep breaths. Let's go back to the wide. Whew. Well, that's close, actually. That's not wide. Can't even get my words straight. Anyway, we love you. We thank you so much for being with us, supporting us on this mission. Uh, and we very much are not going to stay quiet. We're going to keep talking as much as we can. Let's hope that uh, all of our methods of communication are not taken from us. Because all we really want here is peace and freedom and lack of violence and lack of hostility. So I want to thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, and do you have any last words you'd like to say? Thank you all for being here. Let us maintain our own peace inside of our own hearts, uh, maintain goodwill toward each other and may we use our words and our deeds to keep that flag of peace in the ground. Thanks everybody Thank and you. we'll see you next time. Danny, did you want to say anything at the end or no? Just tell him I love him. He <laughs> says he loves you. All right, I got to turn it off now. Thanks everybody. We'll see you soon.